When you look at this image, what do you see? If you're a beginner with Chinese, you may just feel that you're looking at yet another depressing reminder of how much you have to memorize. There's no phonetic relationship between the four symbols you're seeing here, and uh, there's no logical relationship between the appearance of any of the symbols and what they mean, or at least not one that you can guess from a modern perspective. But all four of these examples are, in fact, the same two symbols repeated again and again. It's the same one symbol historically. This is the radical that's called the spoon radical, and we're seeing it here eight times in four different pairs with different orientations. So right away, we have the riddle of the Chinese system of radicals staring us in the face. And you have the exciting prospect that motivates many students that if you just did a little bit of extra work above and beyond what your textbooks tell you, you could dig down into the mystery that's left behind by ancient Chinese and that we're confronted with day by day in so many symbols that don't make sense and in most cases don't even make sense to our teachers, professors, and definitely don't make sense to the average fluent speaker of the language. This is the traditional character still used in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and in Chinese literature to construct sentences with the meaning that you should do something, that you must do something, that you need to do something. So, as you would guess, it's one of the most common written characters in the whole language. The pictograph on the far left is the easiest to understand if you don't already know Chinese to some extent. And unbelievably, this simple, fundamental meaning that you should do something is displayed pictographically as a bird sitting next to a man above a heart under a cliff. In the pictograph on the left, you can actually see the bird. The bird is the top right part of the character. It still looks like a bird in the pictograph although it devolves into more or less a grid of lions and the other characters. And the heart uh, is a sort of three-chambered mess toward the bottom of the character. But still, at that stage of the language, you maybe had a shot of guessing what you were looking at. So, why learn the system of radicals? Well, it's a system that uh, elicits great passion amongst Chinese people, especially amongst uh, teachers of the language. And the passions are quite conflicted. People will tell you that the system is ancient. It's not ancient. The 18th century is just not that many centuries ago. But people definitely feel that it's the ancient foundation the language rests on. And you could say it's the kind of intermediary between the ancient and the modern. It's the way that modern people today reach out to try to feel that they're in contact with the ancient meanings hidden within the language. All the examples used in this video are very, very common words. None of them are obscure, none of them are literary. And the example you're looking at right now has a meaning similar to category. And if you're already advanced in Chinese, or if you're fluent in Chinese, I'd ask you to remember how difficult it was when you were first learning the language to glance at a symbol like this and break it into pieces. This is maybe the most fundamental benefit of studying the radicals. And it's something that everyone does, even if you have no formal training or if you just grow up as a child learning Chinese organically. You have to be able to glance at a symbol like this and break it down into smaller pieces. So this is the first answer to the question, why learn the system of radicals? to learn to see the glyphs in their component parts, to memorize new glyphs through their components. Chinese etymology, for many people, is a frustrating uh, sort of dead-end struggle. But you have to ask yourself, would you prefer to have no meaning to explain the character at all, or would you rather do the work and uh, come to the end of that struggle? This example I showed you earlier, uh, the meaning is similar to category. The correct breakdown of the character as it's written today, as you can see here very clearly, is rice, dog, human head. Those are the three parts comprising the character. If you have a teacher who made up a charming story 
to explain to you what this character means, that's fine. Maybe you have parents or grandparents who told you some kind of story, some kind of uh, fable that makes this easier to memorize. You can invent your own story. You can say, oh, it's a man sitting on the porch watching a dog in the rice field. But the truth is, the real truth is, if you study the etymology, nobody knows why this character looks the way it does. Nobody knows how these three components were gathered together to be associated with this meaning and this sound. Some people will theorize that maybe two of the symbols are phonetic and only one relates to the meaning. There are different theories floating around out there. None of them are factual. They're just speculative. And ultimately, as a student, you're left to wonder. So, sometimes we know the ancient logic of the glyph although you can't see it in the modern form. This is usually because of round after round of simplification and regeneration that has gone on in the Chinese language. Simplification isn't something that just happened once in the 20th century. The construction of what we call clerical script transformed many of the most common characters and, and character components. And sometimes the logic of what the glyph used to be has been totally forgotten. So is the etymology still worth learning? Here again, we're looking at one of the most common characters in the language, and you should recognize the similarity drew your attention to. This is drawn with the spoon radical. You have it there twice. So we've seen now five different characters, all of which comprise the spoon radical for whatever mysterious reason. In this case, though, the spoon radical is not a spoon, and it's not a human form either. Uh, contrary to what a teacher may have told you or what you may have read in a textbook, this glyph already at this point depicts the entire body of a bear. And in early uh, examples, the bear is actually carrying a separate piece of meat in his mouth. Um, in some versions of the character, the meat has just become part of the body of the bear. But at least some of the time, the two spoon radicals actually represent the four legs of the bear, the triangle is the bear's head, and then you have the uh, piece of meat hanging from the mouth of the bear. Does anybody know that today? Does anybody learn the character that way? Well, you can ask around, but most students, even if Chinese is your first language, you have such a burden of memorization in front of you that people make up all kinds of funny stories to help them get along with the language. If you remember this as uh, spoon, spoon, triangle, moon, uh, that would be understandable because the way the modern character is written is indeed two spoons, a triangle, and then the moon radical, a symbol of the moon, because the piece of meat has, with the passage of centuries, degenerated to become identical to the character that represents the moon. This is the reason why I was suggesting you might have heard a different funny story about the character. It could be that a teacher told you, for instance, that it doesn't show a bear, but it shows a bear with no legs. On this slide, the first two symbols on the left, we see the picture of the bear that I warned you about before, and then we see the bear with four lines under it. So some people will tell you that that's a bear with four legs, but uh, I'm putting this up as a comparison. These are the types of false stories that people make up when they don't know the radicals. The four lines that you see at the bottom of all three of the symbols on the right, yeah, those all represent fire, the fire radical. So, in fact, the two symbols on the left, you're comparing a bear to a bear being roasted over a fire. The next symbol is a fish. I have genuinely heard of teachers telling their students that a fish has four legs because in ancient China, people believed that fish walked around on four legs in the bottom of the sea. You may have your own crazy stories about how these characters get taught to people, how they get memorized. Um, and then the next is the color black. And in all three of those examples, the four lines at the bottom represent fire. They do not represent legs. Although, uh, stranger things have happened, as you just learned, the double spoon radical represents the legs of the bear. This is perhaps the single most common character in the Chinese language. And if you ask your teacher to explain it to you, if you learn the system of radicals, try to explain it to yourself and study the etymology, you will simply come into a dead end. Uh, this is used in constructing many, many sentences to link two halves of a sentence together. 
And if you were to interpret the symbols, it would mean white spoon. So different symbols for the spoon is our running theme in this, uh, this episode. This is not the same as the spoon radical. It's a different character, meaning spoon, that's on the right-hand side. And then you have the character white on the left-hand side. Um, you will hear different theories trying to explain it, saying that perhaps the spoon used to be a phonetic character, and I think that's probably true on the whole. Other people will offer you a theory that, no, it really did originally mean a spoonful of something that was white, and trying to construct the, uh, the history of the meaning that way. But the truth is, we just don't know. And even for a character this common, learning the radicals is of very limited use. Although it does at least allow you to split this into two halves and memorize it that way. Finally, this is, again, one of the most common characters. And it explains why many teachers are uncomfortable talking about the system of radicals, even if they encourage their students to do it. Even if your textbook says, you must learn the radicals to get ahead. And that's because characters like this have no explanation. We don't have an explanation for how this came to be written in two halves, as it now is. We don't know how it's linked to the more ancient form that you see at the top on the right-hand side. We don't know what it ever was supposed to symbolize, or if it ever had a phonetic value. This is just a total mystery. And if you break it into components, they do not match up with any of the uh, the radicals. People will tell you that this is one of the, um, the human form radicals on the right-hand side, but you can see just from the information on the screen that's not really accurate. So the system of radicals, it's limited, it's confusing, even people who are native speakers of the language find it confusing. It gives you more information to memorize. It's actually more difficult than learning the language the way a native speaker does but it makes the language more interesting and more rewarding. If you ask yourself the question, should I study the system of radicals? Should I learn the history of this character to the extent that it's knowable? Should I learn to break this down into its component parts? I think the reverse question is, what alternative do you have? As surreal and strange as it is, bird, man, heart, cliff, these are the types of pictographic puzzles that you'll be memorizing in thousands if you're serious about learning written Chinese.